Hey, this is Tristan at Mahalo, and today we're at the Hip Cooks Cooking School in West Los Angeles. And today I'm going to show you how to make a meatloaf. So I've got all of our ingredients out here, and let's get started. The first thing you want to focus on is the food processor. If you don't have a food processor at home, you can use a blender or a mortar and pestle. Uh, it'll just make for a nice ground, grounded, uh, it'll just, it'll be good to use. Okay, just edit that. Okay, so oatmeal. I've chosen oatmeal to use as a binder, as one of the binders for the meatloaf. Some people might use breadcrumbs. If you have breadcrumbs on hand, you can simply replace the oatmeal with the breadcrumbs. That one cup of oatmeal. And I have one tablespoon, one teaspoon of chili powder, one teaspoon of cayenne, quarter of a teaspoon of grounded ground black pepper. Freshly ground is nice because it adds and has more flavor than the pre-ground. And one and a half teaspoons of salt. All right. So now that those are all together, let's grind them up in the food processor. We want that those oats to really be broken up, not a flour consistency, but um, here, I will show you. Some full oats, but most of them are ground. I've already chopped one onion, which is great to help it break down in the food processor. If you want to learn how to chop an onion, check out my how to chop an onion video. Okay. One carrot that's been grated, you can either use a traditional cheese grater or a food processor. quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. So this meatloaf has a bit of heat. We've had chili pepper, cayenne, and the red chili paper, the red, and the red chili pepper flakes. If you don't want as much heat, you can take any of those elements out. And then I have four cloves of garlic. So two I've already taken the skin off of. And to take skin off of garlic, it's quite simple. Remove it from the bulb, separate each clove, and then take a knife and just pound. And the idea is to break free the skin from the clove. All right, so four cloves of garlic. Let's blend that up. This looks good. That's about the consistency we want it. Okay, so a lot of our flavoring is set. Now let's work with the meats. Okay, so let's talk about the meat that goes into our meatloaf. Here I have a pound and a half of ground beef and three quarters of a pound of ground pork. And the pork is a nice addition to the meatloaf because it has a higher fat content. So it will help really hold the meat together and the meatloaf together. And it also adds a different flavor. So the combination is great. If you only wanna work with beef, then you just can make it one and a half pounds plus three quarters of a pound. Okay, so gently with my hands, I'll mix these up. Again, like the hamburger we did in the skillet on one of my other how to make a hamburger videos. So just like on the how to make a hamburger in a skillet video, you don't want to handle the meat really roughly. Be gentle with the meat. Because if you're not, it'll be tough meatloaf, and that's not good. So give it a gentle mix-up. Okay. So, from the Cuisinart. Yummy, it smells good. All right. Get all of that integrated. So lastly, we want to add an egg to it, which will be a great binder. So just crack the egg. I tend to crack it in a separate bowl just to make sure that I don't get any of the extra shells. Grab a fork, give it a quick whisk, and then dump it into this mixture. 
Okay. Now just work that egg through the meatloaf. Okay. So that's nicely mixed. Now let's get a pan. I have chosen not to use a bread pan, and the reason that is is because I want the fat from some of the meat, or I want some of the fat from the meat to flow away from the meatloaf. If you make it in a bread pan, it's great, but it tends to be a little greasy, and this gives that, this, making it this way gives it the opportunity for that fat to, to move away from the meatloaf. So, take the whole lot and shape it, whatever shape you want. I'll go for a loaf today, but maybe if it's somebody's birthday, you could do a J or an S. Okay, so here we go. So think of what a bread pan looks like, and that's the shape for your loaf. Okay. That will go in the oven for about an hour. We'll slip that into the oven, and after 10 minutes, we'll add the glaze. Okay, our meatloaf has been in the oven for about 10 minutes, and while it's in the oven, I wanna whip up a glaze to put on the top of it. So, a half a cup of ketchup. Two teaspoons Worcester sauce, or Worcestershire, or Worcestershire, however you choose to pronounce it. Two teaspoons honey. One teaspoon cumin seed. And a couple shimmies of Tabasco. One, two. And you decide however hot you want your sauce to be. Give it a little mix. So it's nice and combined. And I will go ahead now and brush this onto the top of the meatloaf, just the top, and then the meatloaf will stay in the oven for another 50 minutes. Okay, our meatloaf has been in the oven approximately an hour, and the instant thermometer has read 155. So with my oven, it took about an hour. You'll want to use an instant thermometer to double check your time. Let's see how it looks. Okay, yummy and delicious. Um, this meatloaf obviously had some grease coming out of it, and that is to show you why I like to use a cookie sheet, because if it was a loaf pan, all that grease would be caught up inside. So allow this to rest for about 15 to 20 minutes. It will cool, so go ahead and put some foil over it, and that will allow for easier cutting. Enjoy it with some mashed potatoes. If you wanna know how to make mashed potatoes, see my video there. And that is meatloaf. If there are any other dishes you'd like to see me prepare, please send an email to requestitmahalo.com. And in the meantime, check out our other videos.